I'm going to sneak up behind you for one minute. Simple gifts indeed. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Memorial United Church of Christ. I am Pastor Chris Gorton, and whether you are worshiping with us for the first time today or you are here and this place feels like your spiritual home, you are welcome here this day. You are going to hear a lot about the birth of something new in this space. This is our first time back in the sanctuary in three years on Pentecost. <laughs> The last few years, I have been in this space by myself with these red chairs, um, seeing all of your delightful faces of you that are at home, and I see some red up there as well. Um, I've seen red on those squares and Zoom, but not in this space. So whether you are red or orange or yellow, or there's another color that called to you this day, welcome. This is a good place to be and a good time to think about what does following Jesus in this day mean to us. A few notes for you for worship today. Um, in the bulletin, there's just a short note about the readings. The reading from Act is gonna sound pretty similar, but this is a teaching moment. We typically use, most often, the Revised Common, I'm mean, sorry, not the Revised Common Lectionary, the um, New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. So do you see these acronyms, NRSV? This is what we typically use as our Bible reading, unless the pastor or the spirit calls and we pick something else. But there is an updated edition. So the reading today will sound very close to the NRSV, but it is the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. So now we have more letters <laughs> in the acronym. Not a big deal overall, but I thought I would teach this to you this moment because this is new stuff on a Pentecost day, and there are a lot of new things in our midst. And one is the translation that is being used. I wanted to invite those of you particularly who are on Zoom or potentially in this space to stay for fellowship today. Um, we are going to have Zoom fellowship, and I have it <clears throat> set up in this space <laughs> to um, be able to sit here and connect with you that are at home and just check in, see how you are all doing. If you're on YouTube and want to go to our e-news, there's a link in there to the Zoom uh, coffee hour and worship. If you are here and you want to say hi to people, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. You're welcome to stay and to talk. If you want to head out to the fellowship hall, the patio, wherever, 
this is the time. Pentecost is all about the people gathering together. So I invite you to gather as you will. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church today? Cindy. That this is a fine day to plant the squash in our three sisters planting. So afterwards, if you want to poke your head out, if it's not pouring down, come out and um, witness the planting of our final crop. I know yesterday at our house, we have one mound for our three sisters garden at our house. We have no gardening place, so it's kind of like in our yard. And um, Steve was looking out with binoculars in the morning at our corn, which is starting to come out. And then we went to our graduation for our nephew in Milton. And when we came back, Steve's like, oh, the corn is taller. <laughs> so, so go and watch and check it out out here. And Caitlin and I saw, oh, and then, I, we have a line. Come on over. This is what you call the Holy Spirit at work. Some of you who read your weekly newsletter very closely noticed there was something about Just Bakery in there. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know that we have figured out a way to bring Just Bakery back after, again, three years. It will be a situation where you order online, and you're going to... All the instructions are going to be in this week's newsletter, but you're going to be selecting um, delivery to this church. We'll be doing the third Sunday of each month for delivery. So you're going to order online, you're going to pay Just Bakery directly online, and it will be delivered here for pickup after the service. So look for that in your newsletter coming this week. Follow directions carefully because it is really important what you write in that pickup box so that it comes here. Um, and we're so excited that we found a way to make this work. Thank you. I will add to that is that the third Sunday of the month, most often we are going to be having a mission moment. So those of you that are involved with a mission in the life of the church and want to do a nice quick shout out at it at the end of worship, you are welcome to. On the third Sunday this month, as Case Caitlin mentioned, Just Dane will be delivering here, but Linda Ketchum will also be preaching from Just Dane and then Just Bakery will be delivering goods. So. That is the mission moment for this month. If you would like to consider offering one for July, let me know. And Nancy, did you have one too? Come on up. So Pastor Reverend Mitri Rahib was here on Friday, and he sends his blessings and greetings, especially to Memorial, because he's a longtime friend of this community and um, we were, had several people there on Friday night that over 130 people mm -hmm. at that event on Friday night and so um, his talk from Friday night will be available on the Midvale Community Lutheran mm -hmm. Facebook page as well as the Bright Stars page I'll let you know when those links are available and if you have if you would still like to get a copy of his book the politics of persecution um let me know because i can get something get one to you they're twenty dollars so thanks thank you any other announcements this morning rebecca We have a lot of children and youth in worship today, so I wanted you guys to take a moment and look around at their faces, at their sweet faces. They're so cute. They're so cute. And guess what? They need Sunday school teachers for the summer. So if anybody would like to work with the children this summer, these sweet children, um, it'll be fun. We'll be outside, weather permitting gardening and you know if you don't even want to do a lesson just play with the kids we have tons of stuff just they have some activities some community building but I also have curriculum that you can do um, but a lot of gardening and just having fun so let me know if you're interested um, there is a sign up sheet out there as well and I do ask to have two people per Sunday so you're not alone either <laughs> And that's a good shift into noting that the summer's theme for us will be cultivating community. So what better way to cultivate some community than connecting with our youth as well? So if you're interested, talk to Rebecca after church today. Any other announcements? All right, I have one thing to give you a heads up in regards to worship. 
Today has a lot of stories, so pay attention. For communion, one of the things that we will be doing is I am going to open it up to the Spirit to move those who would like to serve to come forward. So what I will need is three of you, which is why I'm planting a seed, to come up when during the communion liturgy I say, who will serve? I will be asking for two people to hold the wine and juice off on the side, and then one person to hold the plate for me as I serve bread to everyone. So the good news would be if like six of you come up, we'll make something happen. But just need three, so think about it. Is that you today? Have you always thought maybe you'd want to serve, but you're not so sure? This is something that anybody is welcome to come up and do. So think about who will serve today. That is our story. Um, there is not a nice little asterisk or star by our opening song, but I think we should rise and sing together, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Will you please stand as we sing? Please join me in the call to worship. Vibrant God, alive God. God of visions and dreams. God of intimacy. God of sustaining connections. God of bird song and whale song. God of dance, laughter, art, and play. Pour your spirit of life upon us that in our gathering, me white live the joy of holy relationship. Please join with me in the opening prayer. Passionate spirit, we have witnessed too much destruction and felt too much grief to devote ourselves to systems that betray thriving. Enliven our imaginations and awaken our senses to your creative presence, that we might be architects of communities that serve only your life-giving ways. Amen. You may be seated. Come on up. I am going to welcome those who will be presenting the Faith and Service Awards to join up front. You know the flow of this. Those of you who are at home or here, I offer a space of great joy and um, Listen to the Pentecost story that's happening here. Today we are honoring Donna Mullaly with a Faith and Service Award. <laughs> Unless you've been honored by Donna's ministry, you might not even know that it exists. These are the words of the person who nominated Donna. Donna's ministry is quiet. It takes place through the mailing of cards to people who need support. Her work would be completely silent if those of us who received cards and care from her didn't speak of it. 
I've received cards from Donna several times, and they were helpful. Donna's ministry is like that of other senior people. They may not be able to join a committee or show up for the spring cleanup, but they do whatever they can do to contribute. And her lamp shouldn't be left under a basket. Mm. Donna has been a member of our community since 2007 and is also our leader of the First Friday Fellowship, which off offers a gathering space and program for members of our community on the first Friday of each month. Donna spends a lot of time thinking about what would be best for all individuals participating in First Friday Fellowship. It's not just planning speakers, field trips, workshops. It's making flyers and writing blurbs for the e-news. Donna is very thoughtful on what types of program offerings will make a difference to people and inspire them. She plans the lunch buffet beforehand and arranges for people to get car rides to and from the church or to the places they're visiting. She plans each month's events in advance so that there's consistency and people know what they can look forward to each month. Donna definitely takes the lead in all things First Friday Fellowship. Congratulations, Donna. People at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. It's <laughs> been a joy to be here. Thank mm. you very much. Today we are honoring someone who has been a member of the congregation since 2009. He has been an usher, Sunday school teacher, youth group volunteer, and has worked in our media room as part of the tech team. But his biggest contribution to our congregation is his leadership of our Buildings and Grounds Committee. And he has been the chair of this committee for quite a few years. <laughs> In this role, he oversees everything from our beautiful grounds to our HVAC and sprinkler systems. As a leader of this committee, he has planned and maintenance, planned the maintenance of all of our many systems, from replacing all of our lighting to LED, replacing our furnaces, and replacing mm -hmm. our parking lot. He is available to listen to any person or committee with suggestions for our facilities. Please help me honor Jay Johnson. I also don't have much to say, but uh, thank you very much for the honor and the recognition. Um, definitely like to work behind the scenes and uh, <laughs> keep things running around here with help from many of you as well. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. And of course, I didn't wear my red today. But <laughs> <laughs> so today we're honoring a member of our congregation with the Lifetime Achievement Award. This is given to a member of our congregation who has received the Faith and Service Award before and has continued to be a vital and active member of our community. Past recipients have been Shirley Robbins, Ted Peterson, Jeff Faulkner, 
John Hilliard and John Van Overbeek. Today, we honor Gary Johnson with this recognition. <laughs> Come on, Gary. He has continu continued contributions to our church and the wider community. Gary is a lifetime member of this congregation with his baptism on September 29th, 1946, and his <laughs> membership in the congregation April 10th, 1961, I'm told. He was instrumental in moving this congregation from downtown to out here at this site. Since our move, he has been on the trustees committee and has been dedicated to keeping our congregation financially sound. Gary also works with the nonprofit Mark. Mark enhances the quality of life for adults with dis developmental disabilities by advocating for full inclusion in the community, fostering opportunities for self-worth and dignity, and providing a broad array of support services. Gary, I want to emphasize this is not an ending, but just, just a placeholder for continued service to this congregation. So I look forward in a few years to coming up with a whole new service award. <laughs> Maybe we'll call it the Universal Omnipotent Service Award. <laughs> Gary, you are a true leader for our community, and it is an honor to give you this award. Thank you, everybody, and I'm as shocked by this one as I was by the first one. <laughs> How you knew I was going to be here today is beyond me. Well, I had to call a special trustee meeting. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true, he did. And I'm ready for it, too. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> mm. Oh, there's a hand. Yeah, sorry. Today we're going to hear the words from Acts chapter one or chapter two, verses one through twelve. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under, live, under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd was gathered bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, 
are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in their own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? These are the words of the Lord. May we be blessed with understanding.
after that rousing music, we pick up where we left off in the story. But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Apparently, they weren't in Wisconsin. (laughs) No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents to the, in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. May we be blessed with understanding. And now is our time with children. So I invite everyone to come on up front. Join me. I was hoping I could get something going with the clapping. Oh, did, well, you did. There were people clapping. Good job. Yeah. Hey. So Faith and Service Awards. It's one of my favorite traditions here at Memorial. I just love that. I love being able to recognize people publicly for things. Now, the, the people who were nominated today and were given awards, they aren't doing these things so they can receive an award, but I love these kind of moments where we can just say thank you to them as a community. I also like that um, the Faith and Service Awards, you have to be a little sneaky to get people here. So Donna, we do not have a meeting after church today. <laughs> So you are free to go home. (laughs) So sometimes we have to be tricky and sneaky. Now the Faith and Service Awards, that's something that's not just for adults. We've had youth receive these awards as well. So you guys all know Brenda in the nursery. You know, several years ago, Brenda received an award for the work that she was doing in the church. And then several years later, her brother Kevin received an award. And many of you guys remember Kevin, who was doing the uh, science in the Vacation Bible School program. And then I can think of another youth who, this person actually was, um, grew up in this church. They were baptized here um, a few later, a few years after uh, Gary, back in 2004. <laughs> and uh, um, this, this person has been doing a lot of work here. Um, I remember they were helping out with Vacation Bible School, and they've helped out teaching in Sunday School. They have uh, done scripture readings for the church. They've also helped out with the tech here, and they've also been on a committee. Um, this person has been really a, a wonderful role model for for our children and youth here at Memorial. I can think of one time this person was in uh, spring play and one of the students was upset and they were crying and this person went over to them immediately and asked them if they were okay and began talking to them and tried to soothe them. And I just thought, those little acts of kindness, you know. So that's why I am so happy to be able to give an award to Izzy. Izzy, you've been a part of the church your entire life. You were baptized here, you were confirmed here, and you have done so much. And I just want to thank you for being a role model for my kids and for all the kids here at Memorial. Thank you so much. (laughs) Um, I, to be honest, I don't remember your story. Uh, (laughs) I can tell you more uh, because I thought maybe she's like, this is the wrong person. But nope, nope, I remember it. (laughs) But thank you all so much. This means a lot to me. Oh, and this picture, 
this is my favorite picture of Izzy. This was Izzy helping out once again um, for our game day, and she took on, um, I call this Izzy versus the Sunday school children. <laughs> And I love this because you can see the joy in all of the children's faces as they ran towards her. So thank you so much, Izzy. And your work on the green team as well. Thank you. I appreciate all of that. And with selfish reasons, I was really happy when she said that she was going to UW-Madison. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So today we're going to head out to class. It's a Bible trivia day, so we're going to have some fun contests, and we have prizes, lots of fun stuff. So we're going to head on out. Indy and Kieran, would you like to light the lantern? I want to. I I could see the fear in their faces when um because they thought that I was going to ask them to read the prayer, but no, just <laughs> just the candle. Dear God, our ultimate role model is your son, Jesus. But we also have role models living amongst us. May we be inspired by their faith and service each and every day. Thank you for all the role models in our lives, especially people like Donna Mullaly, Jay Johnson, Gary Johnson, and Izzy Ipser. Amen. Here and out. With all the joyful stories we have shared in this place today, will you pray with me as we reflect once again on God's Word? Oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the phrase that keeps coming to my mind from this morning's reading is, lions and tigers and bears, oh my! In the Wizard of Oz, this moment finds Dorothy, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Man on the edge of a very scary woods. To get through it, they hold on tightly to each other, skip cautiously, and begin chanting, Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Say it with me. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! When roar, what else but a lion jumps out at them? Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin man are overcome with fear and stumble backwards, only to realize the lion is not who they thought he was. Well, the lion, he was not so ferocious. And them, those followers of Jesus, well, they thought they were full of wine. They're drunk. How many times do we get stories wrong? How many times do there have to be a moment of last days before humanity figures this all out? I mean, Three or four hundred years or so before Jesus, the prophet Joel lamented about the community's struggle with environmental catastrophes and an occupying force. Joel writes about firestorms and earthquakes, crops which fail. Pay attention. The world is about to change, he says. And Luke, living in the first century under Roman occupation, also lived during days which look like the end times. He writes of good news in an apocalyptic world. In Jesus' life, people had found hope, a wild, unimaginable belief that the world would not always be this way, should not always be this way, and will not always be this way. In the story today, we hear wind and fire and swoosh. Oh my. Pentecost is a recurring act. 
not only in the time of Jesus, but throughout time. In Memorial's E! News, you might have seen that Reverend Dr. Mitri Rahab was in Madison, and Nancy mentioned it during the announcements. He was here on Friday to talk about his book, The Politics of Persecution. Many thanks to Nancy, who is maybe with the kids. <laughs> oh, well, send her my thanks to her, um, because she was one of the volunteers and, from, and others from Bright Stars who helped to bring Mitri here and to make his presence with us possible. Not only was Mitri's presentation fascinating, but during the question and answer period at the end, a young woman who appeared to be Muslim in the crowd asked Mitri, how can we come together and advocate for policy changes? Mitri looked right at her and said, you need to do it. You and your generation my generation has failed, but you, I see the resiliency in, and hope in your generation. Pay attention. Listen to their words, their unimaginable hope, because amazing things are possible when we get together. 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, it was a small room of people that grew into a crowd, then a ruckus, a roaring gust of flame, a whoosh, oh my. Peter must have just stood there trying to figure it all out. Gathering together is one of the components needed for transformation, especially, especially when things are happening all too quickly. Look at the color and the enthusiasm splashed around this sanctuary. Just take a look. There is all sorts of color. There have been all sorts of songs shared today and stories which are full of joy. Like, how many people are worshiping with a guitar and a harmonica this morning? <laughs> Just saying. That is a Pentecost story. At the same time, what lies before us is most definitely a trauma narrative. You gotta remember, for the people in the Pentecost story, it's only been 50 days since Jesus was brutally killed, nailed to the cross just as thousands of other political prisoners and slaves in the Roman Empire were. Since then, people were beginning to tell the story hope-filled stories of resurrection. And oh my, there were so many stories to tell, so much going on in a short period of time. People were trying to figure it all out. As another day begins in Jerusalem, the big question comes before the community. What does this mean? What does this mean? We, too, get together, we speak our truth, we ask each other questions, and as a church, we get some things right and other things wrong. And I will admit that as a pastor leading through such an unprecedented time, I have a lot of empathy for Peter. Peter, who listens to his community and then gives it his best theological shot. I, too, have been trying, giving it my best theological shot in these turbulent days. I listen to you. I pray with you. I hear amazing stories of you, of gathering and doing and giving, oh my, reflected in events such as our Faith and Service Awards. I also hear your hurt, the wondering about what lies ahead. Peter listened to the whoosh and the wind and the fire on the people's hearts and minds. Then he stepped up and interpreted their uncertainty by quoting the prophet Joel. So as always, I am gonna give you my best shot. This is my retelling of Joel for our time. I do this because I think it's important for us to mark this day. As I mentioned before, this is our first Pentecost back together in this place in three years. 
And a lot like Peter's hodgepodge gathering, this is also our first blended Pentecost as we worship both in person and online. And you ask, what does this mean? To this I say, people of Fitchburg, Verona, Oregon, Stoughton, Madison, and beyond, I tell you, those who experience the Spirit are often thought to be drunk. But please, please don't jump to that conclusion. We need you, the measurers and the planners, the healers and the responders. We need the music and art as much as we need the doubters and, yes, those who sneer. Because each of you, each of you, provide people like Peter and like me clarification as, where, as to where the world and where God needs us to be. The prophet Joel said, God speaks. I pour out my spirit on all flesh. Pay attention. The youth around you are inspired to change the world. Can you imagine their hope in this troubled time? Dream with them. Advocate with them. Listen to the children who have grown up experiencing gun violence in their school. Dare to hope big with the youth fleeing violence in Ukraine, Haiti, and Central America. Be as resilient as the youth in Palestine who have no place they can go. Imagine, just imagine a different world for those who need to escape gender-based violence. Among the survivors shall be those whom I call. Listen, Memorial United Church of Christ, your very own high school graduates are pursuing careers in environmental engineering, in music, accounting, marine biology, political science, and working with youth who have autism. They, they have the spirit. May the promise of this place, our coming back together this Pentecost day, change everything. This is our Pentecost moment. In our coming together, see the great promise of this place. God's love, which pours forth on our gathering and our doing and our giving. Oh, my. In a moment, I will ask an usher to come through. And if you have a prayer to share this day, please um, let that spirit flow, whether it is a concern, a joy. We would love to hear your story this day. I do want to lift prayers today for all of you who are here today, one way or another, for the Faith and Service Awards. And caution if you ever get asked to an unexpected meeting. <laughs> we have way. So Gary Johnson and Izzy Apser and Donna Mullally and Jay Johnson, thank you for all that you do in the life of the church. This particular group of Faith and Service Award winners I think is so delightful in the diversity of the gifts you bring to this place. I don't think any of you are on any of the same committees, and yet you give so much to make this church be the church. So thank you for those gifts. 
I also want to do a shout out for Tony Young, um, his daughter Laura, and um, Miles Miski, or getting, Miski, is that the right last name? Miles Miski are getting married on Saturday. So we send Joy along with you, and to Laura, send her our love as Saturday approaches. Others here in the sanctuary, do you have prayers you would like to share with us this day? Caitlin? Uh, prayers for a friend and co-worker who was incarcerated this week, um, justly for her crimes, but as we know around here, not the way that we should be managing this. Mm. Yeah, so prayer for your co-worker. She encounters our criminal justice system, which is not always so just. And Lynn, did I see a hand up? Um, I'm not sure where I talked oh. into it, but... Oh, okay. Um, prayers for my brother-in-law and my sister's family. My brother-in-law lost his mom a little over a week ago mm. after doing several years of kind of going above and beyond in his care of her. Mm. And their middle son, who is a Marine, his family, they are in the process right now of moving out to California, to Monterey, for him to attend a military-related grad program there. So a week of endings and new beginnings and cross-country, cross-country driving. Mm. <laughs> Lots of endings and new beginnings, yeah. And Susan? Uh, yes, um, just a prayer for all of those who, with inflation, are having a really hard time with, um, especially if they work at jobs that don't pay a lot, and then having to pay for gas prices the way they are now and food prices they are now, that they hang on hmm. and... Um, keep their strength and maybe find employers that will help them during this time. Yeah. Yeah, at one point it was the pandemic that we thought was changing our economy and how we would need to respond to our neighbors as a church and now layered on top of that are inflation and gas prices and the risk of, well, the war and, and food chain shortages with the war in Ukraine as well. So yes, may they hold on. Other prayers in this space? As you think about those? I know I have some from those of you at home. I have a prayer from Jim Veloff. First special prayers for their great niece. Um, so Jim and Jan's great niece, Katrina, who is having a heart procedure today. And then also special prayers, please, for Jim's 80-year-old sister, Pat, who after 40-plus years in her condo is moving into an over-55 apartment tomorrow. So again, all those transitions in people's lives. So blessings, um, Jim and Jan, as you support your family during this time. Karen Wells asked for prayers for Karen and Rick's sister-in-law, Linda, who is continuing a long and steep road to recovery after a serious illness and a month-long hospitalization. Dan Pitas lifts prayers this day for safe travel and easy packing for Mikos as he does a big move back to home to Madison from North Dakota. So another moving. And then Jim, or Jan, sorry, also asked prayers of thanks that Mary Kempfer once again has her home belongings around her. Ah, uh, yes, I went to see um, Mary Kempfer, um, and she wasn't in her room. And there's a big stop sign out front of it. I was like, what? So uh, she was displaced by an ant infestation in her old room. So she had to camp in another room for a month. Uh -huh. Now her new room has all of her furniture and wall hangings. Hooray. So this is furniture and wall hangings, hooray, oh my. <laughs> so, which is a hard transition when someone has a memory challenge to move into a new space. So all those transitions make an impact on our lives. Any other prayers this day? Seeing none, let's take a moment of prayer, and then I am going to share this Pentecost prayer with you that was written by the Reverend Joanna Harder, who pastors um, a Mennonite church in Lawrence, Kansas. So let us pause in the silence.
before God. Flaming God of Pentecost, let us speak in tongues of comfort to those weeping over the bodies of their loved ones, shot in acts of violence, killed in war. Let us speak in tongues of courage to those living in fear of the next shooting, the next bomb, the next illness that threatens. Let us speak in tongues of condemnation against laws and policies that promote violence and unjust imprisonment, negate the necessity of health care, and prioritizing the preferences of some over the lives of others. Let us speak in tongues of care for the most vulnerable in our world, human beings, animals, and ecosystems. Let us speak in tongues of love for you, O oh God, and for your people, that your language might be our language. And when our tongues are still, when we have no words to speak, let our hearts burn with your fire. Let our ears hear your words in our own native tongue. Let our skin feel the wind of your spirit, a mighty wind blowing where it will. As we join together with the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. This day, as we gather at the table, Jesus' table, both in this space and in our spaces at home, come knowing that Pentecost will always mean heading out from the safe upper room to a crowd of strangers, from a church made up of people of all ages, those who feel there are, they are in their responsible years, whatever that means, to the excited ideas of teenagers, the chattering joy of children, and the fractured wisdom of those whose intentions leak everything but love, come to this table with the whole old holy bread and new words. We remember this day the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, who invited children to come to him suggesting that children are a model for faithful living and called out against those who put stumbling blocks in the path of one child's life. We remember that Jesus called those who gathered up in, in the upper room, children, and fed them the cup of hope and a cup, the bread of hope and a cup of blessing. So they would remember the loss of God's child and all God's children and the promise to live again. Let us pray. O oh God, we are the body of Christ dispersed and gathered, with different words but one heart, which is always true, though we do not always recognize it. Like the grains that become one whole loaf, like the notes that are woven into a song, like droplets of water that are blended in the sea, we as Christians come together and one body shall become. In your kitchens and living rooms, 
Rest your hands lightly on your elements, which we set aside today, to be a sacrament as we do so here in this space. So we become one in our extended sanctuary. Let us ask God's blessing upon them and upon us and upon all those who are in our prayers this morning. Eat these grains, the promise of life. May they fill us with love. Drink from the fruit of God's vine. May we taste new words of peace. As you come forward this day, who will serve? I'll ask you this week. I just pointed to If anybody here needs elements brought to them, I will ask the ushers just to keep um, alert. And if you need some assistance, we do have elements that we can take out to you as well. So come, for all things are now ready.
this morning, sitting in the sanctuary which includes our physical space on Lacey Road, as, long as, as well as our homes, we have tasted the wideness of God's table across space and time. Gathered with the saints of yesterday, today, and those yet to be, let us embrace the way on which God calls us. Peace you give to us, O Holy One, no matter how impossible it seems. You do not give to us as the world gives, but you give your spirit to us just so that we may learn to give it away. Do not let our hearts be troubled so much that we stop loving, and do not let us be afraid of sharing in the new tongues we receive from all communion with you, so that we may tell the good news to those who need it, even when we do not fully understand it ourselves. Amen. Are going out today, you know, we can't let this Holy Spirit stay down at all. So I am asking um, Jan to do our mission moment for this day. Hi everybody, I'm Jan Clawwater. I'm up here on behalf of the Outreach Committee. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you today about is the Strengthen the Church collection. This is one of four or five of the national UCC collections that we take up throughout the year. Strengthen the Church is basically the people of the UCC cooperatively and collectively um, funding programs within the UCC churches. This could be funding to help plant new churches. It could be funding to help um, churches uh, uh, put forth new activities um, in, uh, in their uh, communities. And so your generosity um, with this offering really helps support the UCC as a whole. All of us fulfill our commitment to creating a just world uh, by investing in new ministries and practices. So there's a variety of ways you can do this. Um, you can go to Memorial's uh, website and the PayPal link that we have, and you can um, uh, put your donation in there and just specify strength in the church. Um, there is a link on the UCC dot uh, org, the National UCC's website. Uh, the uh, URL is in the e-news and also um, is in the bulletin, so you can go there and do it and give online. Or if you just want to write out a check to Memorial and then in the memo line put strength in the church and uh, uh, you know send that in, it, it all works, whatever way you want to do it. Um, and so thank you for your generosity, and we've got a, a short video that the National UCC um, put together to be able to explain a little bit more about what this collection does. Thank you. This poem is entitled Together. We walk side by side, people of faith, boldly building new communities, connected by spirit's fire, balancing bounty and need, we flourish, committed to the body of Christ together. We are the gift, the presence of God revealed, reflected in the beauty of all we are, at one across the miles of our differences, we embrace unity in our diversity, the church as one, impacting the world around us together. We, like trees firmly planted, blossom and bloom, courageously changing lives, we nurture each other's spirits needing each other, learning from each other. We are the Holy Spirit poured out together. We breathe love, visioning the possibilities, new churches, revitalized worship communities, developing new leaders, providing for our neighbors in crisis. We are evidence of the church in action together. We are miracles, insightful and creative, spirit-inspired, generosity-filled, children of love and life, giving from the abundance of who we are, giving to build the whole church, giving to strengthen the church together. We emanate the spirit of Pentecost, extending extravagant welcome with arms outstretched, 
we heal, touching each other's lives with grace, tearing down walls and building bridges, erasing borders and boundaries. We are the church growing stronger together. in mind, body, and or spirit as we sing every time I feel the spirit. People of spirit, may the winds of creativity strengthen your imagination. May passion for living breeze through your front door. May play and intimacy unfold within you. Vibrant wisdom for the kingdom of God is made by the wild and the wily. So let us dance our way towards world's transformation. Go and dance that spirit.